Fantastic. You are watching Encounter Roleplay, and this is Wheels of War, a tale of epic battles and political backstabbing set in Dungeons and Dragons' original game world, the world of Greyhawk. You see some empty boxes here. Some of our folks had long-standing commitments before we even got into this game, but we have three fantastic players here with which we will continue our story in full epic style. We're going to continue it in five player style, even though we've only got three. Let's go uh, around and you guys can introduce yourselves yet again. Remind us what amazing characters you're playing. We're going to start with you ladies first, Alex. Hello, I am Alex and I will be playing Lady Vibrance, the tiefling cleric. <laughs> What about you, Josh? Let me get you right as you take a sip of coffee. Absolutely. Always uh, always prepared to fend off the DM's uh, sudden intrusions. <laughs> I will be playing uh, Sable Cross, who is the Asimar Paladin. And I love your commitment to keeping it to a five-person encounter, even though there's only three of us. As a, as oh, a fellow wow. evil bastard, I respect <laughs> Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. And I think it would be rude for anybody to play their characters, so we just won't. Yeah. So what about you, Kevin? All right. I'm Kevin. I'm playing a Shiroi Gato, a tabaxi monk. So <laughs> two fighters and a cleric. I, I think we can add a level, like, five-player enemies over here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just fun to say. Shiroi Gato. Like, does yeah. that come with a little bit of a French tickle at the end? Gato. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's just meant to be like a a sort of like spin on like the Spanish way of saying gato, like which means. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so no French at all. Yeah, not really. <laughs> no. Like, a little bit. <laughs> like he's just that cocky, I guess, or maybe like the elves just saw potential in him, and that's how he sort of like changed the name into that over time trading with them, but. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got his flares. <laughs> you, without question, have your flares. But before we get into your flaring self, let's talk just briefly about our fantastic sponsors. First and foremost, Fantasy Grounds is our virtual tabletop of choice. And so all of the roles that you see tonight and gameplay are being managed through Fantasy Grounds. And you can try it for free at fantasygrounds.com. Uh, also, Please go get your miniatures from Wayland Games. It's waylandgames.co.uk. And you get yourself a whole range of D&D evil fun with some Warhammer 40K poured over the top with special sauce, all with 20% off. Go do it. And finally, my dear friends, over at Tabletop Loot, uh, provide fantastic dice, which we give away all the time when we hit a stream goal, you can go to tabletoploot.com to see the kinds of sets that you can win right here every session. And finally, let me remind you how you can interact with today's game. When we hit 20 retweets, we give away a set of Tabletop Loot dice. When we hit 20 retweets, retweets, 20 retweets, when we hit 20 retweets on this tweet, and I'm sure somebody's going to throw that tweet in here. There it is. Yeah, it's already in there. We'll give away our first set. And, of course, you can donate to affect the game by giving players uh, nat 1s, nat 20s, wild magic surges to make the DM's game even harder. And this month's special, which I fear, the Table of Pets. Fantastic. And... We have, from last week, a magic item that we will apply at some point in today's game to one of our players. When, you ask? How? It remains to be seen. Fantastic. We're going to get started. Players, any final words before we begin? <laughs> Don't suppose anyone's got any diamonds. No. Really okay. We're going to get a little low on those at uh, Flame Flower. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's a scratch. Don't That's have... a nothing on the diamonds. 
don't have diamonds, but I will compress this Baylor to the point of crushing him so fine that he is, in fact, a diamond. His cold Good hustle, black please don't will die. be compressed into diamonds. That's, that's, that's my whole shtick today. That's what I'm here for. Fantastic. All right. Here we go. Previously, right. on Wheels of War, we were thrown into the thick of it on the brink of a river with the lands of Furiandi and the banners of Furiandi, the army of Furiandi, assembled at their backs. Our party looked across the river at the lands that were previously known as the Shield Lands, but which now are desolate and poisoned. And as the fog cleared, they saw a ferocious army of, of course, orcs and goblins, wretched human beings of all stripes, but more disturbingly, demons, both great and small, belched right up from the pits of the abyss. Siege engines, ballistae, trebuchets, all aimed at their army. And at that moment, wheeling out of the sky, landing in their midst, something that I think that... Uh, that Balrog, uh, what is it, Gandalf called it uh, a demon of darkness and flame. It's the D&D version. A demon of lightning and flame landed, what is it, a, a Balrog of Morgoth. Is that right? That's what he said. What did you anyway, say? Could they? He landed right in the midst of them and battle began. Battle went poorly. And also part of the battle was a high priest, a high priest of Eus, the old, Eus the evil, master of dread and awful presences, the lord of pain. And this cleric rode atop an undead dragon, and his name is Potch. At sound of that name, Sable Cross, in the midst of battle, had a vivid flashback. Take us on that journey, Sable. I remember hearing this name for the first time in a small, disgusting, fetid little hut that was sort of it was dilapidated. It was it was falling apart. There was. Uh, all manner of gore and viscera in every direction. But none of that was important because what I learned from that was a single name. Uh, in a deal with something that's super chill, nothing bad happened, inside checks were off the chart, strong 11s all around, nothing bad, no repercussions. Um, I found out a name, and it's a name that I have been looking for for quite some time. Um, and I am hunting individuals um, and patches on my lip. patch. Pa ha how, how am I pronouncing this? Patch. Patch. Pa 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 it's almost like that. Patch. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. You gargle a little bit of phlegm at the back yeah. of your throat to drag out the A's. Yeah. Patch. Yeah. I'm going to be frightfully British and talk like this, and then every now and again, Barch. and uh, that, that would just come out just naturally. I'll slip it into the conversation. I um, I, I hear this name, um, and this name has been what's driving me for the past. I'm not quite entirely sure how long. A considerable nice. length of time. Yeah, months at this time, and um, I, I am. Um, there's now. There's now. Baylor between me and him? Uh, well, let's see. Before we jump to that, I know you're desperate to come down on Potch, but not only did we jump back six months before this battle with your character, we did so with every character. Kevin, what did we learn as we jumped six months back in your story? All right. Well, in my we we come to find out that I had a cross with a 
Ooze's and Igvil's orcs in the hundreds, and I just had to retreat back to Flame Flameflower Flame Flower because it was just too much for me to handle. And I come to find out from my master Oliet and an elf refugee that my people were wiped out by all these orcs, and my guy was just fuming with rage. Shiroi is just is out for vengeance, justice, whatever to justify like killing every single one of those guys that took off his family or oh, that just wiped out his kind. And now he's heading straight for Tirimo's location to try to forge an alliance with the humans and take on U all of Uza's forces in the, the land of Now, who did you think was responsible for the fall of all your kind? I would pin it on to just any, any orc said like worship Ooze or any of those dark forces, demons of any kind. Yeah, he's just gonna go right for those people. But if other people are responsible, he's not—he's not afraid to take more of those lives. I, I, hands, there's no concern. I don't think that you're afraid of anything, my dear friend. Oh, but he's... your your master in the monastery feared that because all of these creatures came up from Perrinland, perhaps the witch queen of Perrinland had returned. The woman known as Igwil, the mother of Eus. But Lady Vibrance, at the same moment six months ago, we visited you. What was happening in your life at that time? Instagramming, oh. some sunning beside the pool. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, generally, leisurely life until uh, Uz rolled in. Uh, laid waste to the entire land that we had reclaimed after his last war, which we'd... Look, Lady Vi wasn't too concerned with the current government falling. It had its flaws. It had it coming. But unfortunately, it took the entire city, including our place in it with it, uh, in order to survive and hopefully one day reclaim and improve our place in the uh, Horn Society hierarchy. Uh, Vibrance and her mother fled south to the human lands that until very recently Lady Vibrance had been an active part of the military fighting them uh, and to avoid being you know shot on sight as it were uh, had to send my dad back to the old hell dimension which was super fun. Love you dad go to hell. <laughs> yep bye. But before you sent him to hell Yes, he, he gave me gave something. A gift. Mm, he gave me an orb that uh, I wasn't particularly pleased to carry, uh, understanding the potential of it and if it fell into the wrong hands, how many problems, how much chaos it could cause. But also understanding that this orb, this very powerful orb, which I believe was a scrying orb of some description, yes. uh, would be very, very valuable to our previous enemies in the south who we were now trying to win over and that would be not only our passage into the lands and through the lands but the forging of the alliance that we hope to make so, a very important piece it. of booty you brought the booty i brought the, the booty belvor of furiandi that is of course we had backstory from our dear uh tia and um from what, what is his character's name? It is Tirimo. From oh, how does he pronounce his name? Eugenio, right? Eugenio, yes. yes. Eugenio. Eugenio. Got it. Close enough. Close enough. We heard their backstory, but since they're not here, we're going to save a recap of that for next week. Right now. The, the armies of Furiandi and the remnants of what were the Knights of the Holy Shielding are still at your back. But Lord Grievering, the leader of these forces, called for a retreat as the forces of Eus pouring across the river seemed to be too much for the troops. Their retreat was not orderly. Essentially, their morale broke. They stampeded away with these evil forces at their heels. And at that moment, as all of you fought against a huge Baylor demon, the dragon landed again, undead, 
tattered with uh, huge reams of withered flesh sloughing off its skeletal body. It was ridden by the high priest of Eus, Potch. You are now between the proverbial rock and a hard place, between an undead dragon and a Baylord demon. Thus begins episode two, the Herald of the Hierarch. We join the battle in action. As soon as the dragon lands, Lord Grievering points, you, you, take the Baylor. We will fight the dragon. He points towards Ilivara and Tidimo, assigning them, the two of them alone, with a, a phalanx of quivering troops at their backs, this Baylor demon, and points to Lady Vi, to Chiroi, and of course to Sable, and begins charging towards this dragon, ridden by the High Priest of Eus. He lifts his sword high over his head as he charges. How do the three of you charge, or do you? I don't want to take that choice out of your hands. Clerics don't charge. Um, are, we, are we still in our previous initiative order or are we going to re-roll that? Yes. It is still there. Great. Clerics don't charge. All of my healing in the future is free. You heard it here. <laughs> I'm all born yeah. with this. Oh, healthcare plan. <laughs> Clerics. Um. Healthcare. All right. Oh no, we had, we had healthcare in the Horn Society. <laughs> it was state issued. It's a lawful society. Yeah. Evil, exactly. But healthcare but bureaucracy lawful. they loved that loved that all about it so let's um, go around the circle what about we'll go ladies first how do you respond to lord grievering's order that you charge oh well i know that i'm not charging but i'm pretty sure some of my buddies are mm -hmm. so uh, 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 i am going to cast aid on uh Shiroi. Mm -hmm. Shiroi is going to get some aid from me. So raising up my, my palm with my holy symbol on it and throwing out an aid spell. So you're going to regain five hit points. All right. Uh, and I can choose up to three creatures in range. So actually it's both of you. All right. All right so on. you're both getting aid. Uh, and your you getting hit point... You one of the three, I, or is Grieving one of the three? Hmm. Grieving, not me, not oh. not for me. I don't need it. All right. You're so selfish. No need. So right, the three, that and uh, up to three creatures within range. Each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increase by five. All right. So your no. hit point maximum has gone up by five, and you get five hit points for now. All right. So a little bit tougher. And here's the fun part, uh, because that is an enchantment, no, nah, abjuration. Wait, mm -hmm. I have to check one thing. Please continue, but I have to check one thing. Mm. Well, Josh, I saw your lips moving, but I wasn't hearing you. Yeah, no, because I, I was muted. Uh, I am <laughs> I am not 100% right this second, but I still have... That's okay. Oh. I figured it out. Uh, oh. If I cast a spell with a spell sword of first level or higher to an, and target an ally, that ally can now use their reaction immediately after the spell to make one weapon attack against a creature of my choice that I can see. Ooh. You'll oh, get wow. to use your reaction to attack him. So it's basically you will get an attack of opportunity against this dude now. All right. Wow. Right on. All right. Well, each of you sensing that, um, Josh, what does Sable choose to do? Having the order to rush for it. Sable... Sable is absolutely, horrifically, terribly torn because he really wants to go over there and have uh, extended discourse with um, this individual um, repeatedly over and over again with his sword. <laughs> I want to... I want to 
do inappropriate things, even inappropriate on the battlefield. But unfortunately, <laughs> I actually can't do that um, because of my talents. I have to fight the greater evil. And I honestly think he reckons probably right now the Baylor is a bigger threat than... They can both fly, but a Baylor is probably a bigger threat than Dracolich. I don't know off the top of my head. It's been a long time since I've run them. But I've also stuck a load of stuff on this, so I'm going to hit this. So I'm going to start yeah. hitting. An RP perspective, I would be comfortable with either because maybe a Baylor is tougher than a Dracolich, but at the same mm. time, clearly the guy on the dragon is running this battle. So it's like the chief. Yeah. It's giving orders. So whichever I think, you choose. Of I think I've, I've wound up this hit but this hit that I'm going to deliver is simply going to be a statement piece and it's going to come up to pointing at him and saying, you're next. This is this is opening show. This is like the trailer. Fantastic. Your life is about to become the tragedy. Um, it's the that teaser I'm going of to his tell. demise. Well, yeah, I'm this is gonna ask... <laughs> here's, the, here's my calling card. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask each one of the three of you how you wanted to begin, but since you've been granted essentially an attack of opportunity, take it now, my man. Yeah. And it can and only be, really... be against this guy. Yeah, I will. Um, well, I've got a load of stuff stacked on him. Um, I can't do my thing. It would honestly be better for the monk to go first. Because you're going to get more, okay. account, uh, you get like the bang and the thing, and I, I need to figure something out. All right, All right then, then, Kevin, you have been commanded by Lord Grievering, who is clearly in charge of this battle, but you've only known him two weeks. You, you owe him no true allegiance, but hmm. you do see this undead dragon land with who is clearly the spokesperson of these evil forces. He's asked you to rush forward with him to attack. What do you do? All right. I think I'll take a couple more. I want to take a few more swipes at this Baylord thing that I, I'm currently right on its face. So let's see if I can make at least. <laughs> That's true. Three You're like dangling from a horn. Yeah, I'm staring right at his eyes. I like, was clawing his eyes out last session. So I'd like to at least make one more strike to see if I can blind him, and then I'm gonna try to bounce off and then try to rush with the uh, Baylord yeah. and get this hype. All right, so here's your free attack of opportunity. All right, let's see. So that is plus <laughs> The dangling kitty. <laughs> so, oh yeah, kitty's got claws. Let's see. Yeah, the so dangling that, kitty. So that's plus nine. Let's roll it. Oh. oh. Oh, wait. Nice. That's okay, it was a freebie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it Fantasy Grounds is still catching up over here. Uh, okay. So that yeah, looks like you rolled a nine. Nine plus. Interesting. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting um, way to put it. How are, yes, you so adding, think... how are you adding in the. Hold on, let me try. All right. <clears throat> I would. Can I can I use that as my? It's the wrong modifier. I just rolled a nat twenty. I just wasted a nat twenty. Uh, <laughs> I'm so angry. No. Oh my god. Oh, no. oh my god, that is so painful. I don't know the way the way things work in my world. Nat twenty seem to come in clumps. So um, yeah, it, it could well, just we'll be see. a <laughs> Um. So if you type in, in the bottom left, you see where it says adjusting, and there's the zero. Yeah. If you click on the zero and then type in the number, whatever your modifier is, and then pick up whatever dice and the next dice you roll will add plus that. All right, yeah, I've been doing that. <gasps> just get the, the pop up. Oh, Wait. wow. Oh, shit. All right. Okay, now, okay. all right. So I'm going to say we're going to take that and we're going to move ahead. Let's there you go. go. Oh, let's see. All right, so I'm just taking a couple swipes, a swipe at his eye. I want to try to blind him, and then I'm just going to try to bounce off and rush to, uh, oh, yeah, just rush over to where the Baylord is and try to just give him some support. So I have to roll damage on the... You do. Eyes of the you do, right. if you'd like. See, I told you that 20's coming clumps. Okay. All right, so 
Let's do that. So that is a plus five and one D six. Oh. Alright, all right, hold on. Yeah, it's I yeah. I probably have to do this just manually, so let's Oh yeah. Just order. whichever way is quickest to do it. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so yeah, that's the six wait. Alright, so eight points of damage on that attack doubled. Alright. Correct. So that is a sixteen. Or did you choose to roll twice, specifically? Oh yeah, that's just a 16. Alright, oh, just a mere 16. So, right. dangling from his horn, you <laughs> scrape a huge gouge across his eyelids. It is, a, it is a testament to the size and girth of this creature that your, your claws didn't penetrate his eyelids and rip out his eye. But his, his eyelids are about as thick as a saddle, and the creature pulls back, shakes, trying to get you off of his head. You won't get to move this time, because mm -hmm. as I understand it, what Lady Vi did was give you an attack of opportunity. Your move Basically, will come yeah. on your turn. All right. Does that make sense? All right, so Lord Grievering is rushing across the battlefield, mm. and... Potch sort of stands in his saddle on the back of this creature, raises a right hand and says, Noble Lord, look upon the battlefield. My forces devour yours, quite literally. And you, you see Lord Grievering look to the side just in time to see a rock, a huge winged creature, literally pluck the entrails from a fallen knight. Both of his rear talons are on his, one on his chest, one on his legs, and his head pulls up a huge coil of tangled intestine. The man still lives and cries out, and the rock begins to eat. Potch continues. Surely you would like to yield and throw yourself upon the mercy of the Old One? Well, Grievering stops, seems to waver for a moment. Sable politely raises his <laughs> hand. <laughs> While we were doing all that, I completely forgot to actually roll my attack. Yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot to roll my uh, my free uh, attack from um, Lady Vi. Go for it, dude. And let's I feel, say, I feel like let's say this really attack, we're not going to work on it. This attack will actually happen in this moment where Lord Grievering wavers. Just staring, looking glumly at that nat 20. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is a... Did that roll? Mm. I saw a yes. roll. No, it's in it. Uh, so that is a okay. My modifiers. I'm sure, you've got some big fat bonuses on that bad boy. Um, I have a plus. Are you? Uh, so that will be a nineteen. A nineteen against this creature is what you need to hit. Duly noted. Hell Describe yes. The blow. Um, the blow is going to be a cacophony of dice because I have to roll a cacophony of dice. Uh, I'm going to step up to him. I have something witty to say, but I need to type in. So it's 2d6 plus 10 for Great Weapons Master plus 10 for Necrotic Shroud plus I will save the thing plus. Four for strength, plus four for charisma for hexblade stats. I'm in a bad oh, mood. I'm in a bad fucking mood, guys. It's a Baylor. It's pissed me off, and uh, I'd like to smite it, please. And that'll be uh, forty-eight. And then oh, I, um, I told you. I told you. I've lost my fucking temper, and I'm going to. So this is a combination of Hexblade's Curse, Hex itself, uh, Necrotic Shroud, uh, Great Weapons Master, uh, Booming Blade, Divine Smite, 
and I'll chuck my other smite in there as well. And uh, yes, I did save this. I actually <laughs> saved this macro to, to just copy and paste because I couldn't. Too many oh, dice. Cool. <laughs> Thank cool. you, past cool. me. Thank you, past. It's legal. I, I I spoke to Shane about it beforehand. It was like, it, it, yeah, I found yeah, a thing. We, is this okay? We went through this. If it crits, oh my gosh! But if it crits, it's it's. But hilarious. unfortunately, uh, didn't crit today. No crit today. However, um, that 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 is holy. <laughs> a pile of Wait dice. for it. <laughs> That'll be 86 damage. Um, no, 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 it's, it's all of that. It's all of that. It's all those dice that was rolled plus 31. Okay. <laughs> Should I get? Should I get? Are off you sure right that's now? not the crit version? No, 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 no. That's not the crit version. <laughs> that, is, that is that is a normal attack. That is a hex. <laughs> so great weapons master gives you plus 10 to damage. Booming Blade oh gives you additional thunder damage. Uh, my Necrotic Shroud, which I've currently activated, which is the thing that he's currently afraid of, and in a minute we'll need to make a saving throw against when my turn comes around, um, uh, gives Some me extra general. damage. Um, that's my Smite, plus my Eldritch Smite, plus my Charisma modifier for Hexblade's Curse, plus my Strength modifier, plus a load of dice because it's a weapon and it's currently a plus three. Um, and what- You should into class on builds, dude. <laughs> there's what Sable says as he steps up with the sword over his shoulder, looks up at this thing who's currently got the fear condition on him from Sable's just like, essentially looks like he's crying like dark black ink, um, skin turned black, huge bone necrotic wings spread out behind him. And I'm going to look up at it, and in Abyssal, I'm going to say to it, Maybe you didn't hear him. The man said retreat. And I'm going to swing at him. Because <laughs> in Sable's mind, that retreat wasn't meant for our guys. That was meant for their guys. And I'm going to fucking lay into this guy. That's my, that's my reaction, not on my turn. Wait for my turn, Baylor. <laughs> You're welcome. Fucking come for you. Just a moment. <laughs> right after the cat slices his eye, Pacha's voice causes the Baylor to turn, and then he looks down at you as you speak. He tries to bring his sword down, just barely catches a glancing blow of your blade as it comes in. Tring. His massive arm, about the size of your body, is thrown back with the sword, nearly escaping his grasp, and your blade continues unabated, tracing a line from his left nipple down across his body to his right hip, right hip bone. A huge, gaping red mouth opens across his torso. Worms teem from the lower part of it. Across the top, flames and electricity spark out. He actually staggers back with a weight that causes the ground to go boom, boom, and appears entirely disoriented. Potch sees this. I fear the mercy of the old one will not rest upon you. And the dragon begins to move forward. Potch and dragon will now join initiative. So let me jump that in there for him. And now for the dragon, I'm going to, so let me roll initiative here. There we go. A 24. Whoops, I forgot you got to roll it in the bin. There we go. So that is for Potch. And this is for the dragon. Oh, wow. They got terrible rolls. 11 and a, what was that one? A three. Fantastic. 11 and a three. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid we're just going to suck it. A three here. Oh, fantastic. 
Wow. All right, let's put that in. There we go. So, Lord Grievering at the tang, and there's also just sort of an arcane that comes from the blow that that uh, Sable lands on this Balrog. The Balrog actually begins to whimper, and I'm going to speak, forgive me, Tia, I'm going to speak momentarily for Ilivara. Well, I suppose we can take him now. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh, where is he? Kirimo says, well, of course, he's been softened up for us. Mm. Now that I have butchered both of their accents, Potch <laughs> and the begin to move forward. And we're in initiative order, which means it is Shiroi who gets to go first. Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. Ha. All right, so this guy, this Baylor is all, looks pretty banged up from what I can tell, just like being right in his face and seeing the all that. The is critical. He's still got this body-long gash spouting all sorts of stuff. Before I but forget. But John's giving it, a double it, finger. It, it might be. No, I'm giving the Baylor a double finger. No, I <laughs> Just in case it becomes relevant, um, if he does try and back away or if the Baylor tries to run, I'm kind of hoping he does. Um, Booming Blade uh, <laughs> has a secondary effect. If he moves for any reason, um, voluntarily, doesn't matter in which direction, he takes an additional 48 from the damage instantly. <laughs> oh, how long does that last? Oh, just till the beginning of my next turn, but I can do that okay. every turn. Gotcha. Mm. All right. Good grief. We're so broken. Yeah, that's that's. Booming blade Eventually, I get to attack, and we'll see how it goes. Hmm. All right. I think seeing as how Sable did a pretty good number on him, I'd like to, like, my attack roll is a bit creative. I'm taking out my sword and I'm stabbing it into the wound he left and sliding down, trying to get back onto the ground, just like. So you're gonna take the blade elevator downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I hit it first. So let's roll for that sucker. Uh, hopefully, it actually takes it. So let's Drum see. roll! <laughs> Seven! Right. But I have it's a very good one. 19. All right, nah, that's not good. But no. The problem is, you try to attack, try to get your sword in, but the guy is just spinning and writhing, trying to clutch himself together. All right. Well, I still got another attack in the ac action and attack in the action, so I'm gonna try rolling it again. A 19. Oh. Fantastic. Oh. That one you're able to All hit right. with. All right. So as I'm going down this guy's side, let's do a plus five and a one d six. <laughs> All right. I don't know what that comes up as, like a six and a five. But I think that's full damage. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot right. of points damage. All right. So now I am on the floor, uh, and I just sort of turn to Sable. I'll just be like, first one to parch is a rotten egg, and I'll just run. I'm just going to like <laughs> rush up with Baylord and, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah, just going to be. Let's see how far I can go to. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Is there a chance, like, there's any, like, rock formations I can try to try to jump off of and try to get onto the dragon and, like, face it? There, unfortunately, is not. There's just uh, small shrubs and, and small trees. This is something that obviously, until recently, has been a farmer's field. Okay. Would I have to roll a disadvantage if I just want to try to straight up jump onto the dragon from... Like, if I just rush from... You just want to or... mount that dragon, is that it? <laughs> yeah, I want to mount Ride it. Ride the dragon, like, man. Baseball. Ride the dragon. It's the only way we're going to get through this. All right. Um, you, have to, you must ride the dragon. Yeah. Ride I the dragon. Would say, I would give you... Um, well, you've already used your action. You've mm -hmm. used your bonus to disengage so that you could get over there. I'm going to say you just don't have enough this turn left. Okay. Hmm. I'd say I can just at least but move there and get down. Hmm? 
I'm sorry. But you definitely got all the way to him. And I, I, can, I will apply your momentum as if that was just where your turn ended. And you can still jump next round. All right. I will do that then. I just really hope he doesn't step on me. That would really put a dimmer on things. <laughs> it yeah. could happen. It could happen. All right. So in the meantime, Lord Grievering decides to cast a spell. He's going to start with a shield of faith for himself. So that will be his bonus. So that will give him a little bit of bonus on his armor class. Actually, he's going to throw that on Shiroi, who will have run up ahead of him. In anticipation of the fact that he's about to go point blank, clearly, he throws a shield of faith and applies it to Shiroi. So for up to, up to the next 10 minutes, you'll have a plus two to your armor class, unless Grievering's attention, his concentration is broken. And he runs forward and attacks with his long sword. He's going to do two attacks. I'm going to roll them both at the same time. One, a 16, and the next a 12, 16, 17, a 21. Yeah, they're, they both hit. So Grievering rushes forward with his holy blade. You can hear um, Gateau as, as he rushes forward. You can hear his blade humming with some sort of holy energy. And dang, dang, he brings the sword gratingly across the rib cage of the, the exposed rib cage of this decaying creature. So we're going to roll for that. 2d8 plus 4. I'm going to do this the easy way. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 points of damage for this dragon. The dragon rears up. Potch sits down in his seat. <sighs> there we go. Next is Tiramo. We're going to skip Tiramo. Potch gets to attack next. Still riding the dragon, spooling back and forth. What will Potch do? He looks, evaluating the threats around him. He's going to cast a flame strike. Fantastic. So he's going to bring the flame strike down. <laughs> Hmm. He's going to bring it down right there on Shiroi and Grievering. So right in front of the dragon, woof, a huge column of flame smashes into the ground. Mm. So let's look at Flame Strike. All right, 21 AC. So I can, Please yeah. don't fail me. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to actually look it up so I know what to roll. Over here. And all right, so that's going to be 4d6 fire and 4d6 radiant. And he's going to cast it at seventh level. So it'll be 4, he's gonna what now? 8, 96. Okay. How do I do that? What is the sure. easiest way in fantasy grounds to do the four, uh, five, six? You know what? It's really hard. Don't worry about it. No. Yeah, it's easy if you just do this little click thing. Oh, I had terrible rolls. 32 points of damage as a column of light encircled by flame boom, smashes into the ground, completely enveloping both uh, Shiroi and Lord Grievering. You'll take all that damage unless you can do a dex save for me at a DC 16. Actually, right. that should be high. I'll fix that for the next round. Okay. I should be able to. Let me... That's, I got plus five to my decks. So let's roll it. And... All right, That'll that should save it. That saves uh, it. <laughs> thank goodness for you. And for Lord Grievering, he rolls a six. 
seventy-nine. Oh, no. He's going to take the full damage. Thirty-two points of damage for poor Lord Greering. So the swirling light and flame, as quickly as it came smashing into the ground, it disappears in a tornado of smoke. And Potch says, my poor fools, I will bring you to the limit of your lives and then scoop you up and carry you to the presence of Hughes himself for his pleasure. A delightful invitation. Sable, it's your turn. Your smoking friends lie about 20 feet away. 25-ish. How long? I would say, yeah, about 35 feet away. Oh, so with that deck save, do I take the full 32 or do I just take, take half? All right. So that would be six tang. All right. 16. Sable, what will you do? Um, I will draw up to, um, I, I look, I look up at the, ba the, uh, <laughs> the bale, and I sort of point my sword at it. Um, it's still got fear from me until uh, the end of my turn it repeats its uh, saving throw i look at it and i point the blade at it and say you wait there <laughs> and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna march over um towards patch i don't think i can get quite within range i think i'll fall just short however i will push my fear effect over Unfortunately, it will affect Lord Grievering as well, but it will affect no, Sorry, buddy. Um, Yikes. Poor Lord Grievering. So describe that fear effect. Um, so, in one second, my ability's up. Uh, it is my Necrotic Shroud. Um, it's a 10 feet radius uh, whilst my Shroud is active, and um, it's a charisma saving throw spell save is a uh, dc 17 or be frightened of me until the end of my until next the end of time. time until the end of time just be afraid of me it's not much to ask it's not unreasonable either i don't think uh, no. i don't think so i think it's an entirely justifiable fear oh. yeah disable is a pretty scared look at Bad boy. <laughs> so you're going to use your turn to disengage from the Baylor and now rush towards this creature here. Um, All right. Yes. Um, and I will. Oh, do I want to? So I don't. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm with the pain of it. I'm. I'm. I'm just sure, and I'm like, I kind of want to. I kind of want to just. I kind of want to use my action to dash. And give the Baylor a chance to swing at me, just to be, <laughs> just so I can I close think the you would take that opportunity. I'm, I, you know what? It's him. Considering who I'm going, who I'm coming at, I forget the Baylor exists for a moment, um, and I will use, I will use my action to dash. Oh, and fantastic! Now the Baylor has. Fear, so he's going to have disadvantage against his yep. attack for you? Yep. All right. So he brings, he, he stops clutching at the wound in his chest. As he sees you watching away, his eyes flare with hate. He swings the sword down at you, an 18 and a 5. The sword, tang, smashes into the cobblestone street, but the whip swirls over its head, sending off little claps of thunder as its electrical damage courses reaching for you. Yeah, he snaps his whip. You feel the breeze and a strange pulse of static electricity on your ass cheeks, but it fails to truly connect. Oh, disadvantage sucks. <laughs> so it was, it was can... terrifying until then that one. I was like... Yes. Okay. Oh man. All right. 
So as you rush forward, it is Lady Vi's turn. Nothing, no bonus, nothing else you can do with this turn there, Sable? Uh, no, um, but I will. Oh, yeah, that, that was your bonus. Uh, I haven't got a bonus to use, I don't think. Actually, let me, let me just check. I just don't check. have a bonus. I'm just I mean, that was used for your dash. Yeah, da, da, da. Oh, I've just. Uh, I'm an idiot. But I've already done it, and I'm committed to it now, so I will just have to remember it for the future. Uh, yes, that is all I will do. And um, okay, I will use my channel divinity as a bonus action to use vow of enmity. Ah. Uh. And sweet, yes. And uh, I gain advantage on attacks uh, against that opponent for the next ten minutes. Eh? Jesus. And who who do you give your vow of enmity to? I assume Potch. Yes. All right. Actually, no. His dragon, specifically his dragon. Yeah, I ain't letting him fly away. No, 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 no. no. Very nice, because I'm gonna need that for what I want to do. <laughs> what about you, Vi? Uh, well, I'm gonna throw out a little bit of healing at our um, at uh, Shiroi, uh, a healing word at third level. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Congratulations, you get twelve hit points back, and. Because I've targeted you with a spell of level one or higher, you get to take your reaction to take an attack against that thingy right in front of you. Oh, oh my gosh. That is a cool <laughs> trick. Love it sure that. is. <laughs> All right. Hmm. So I'm guessing uh, since I can only take an attack, I can't use that to... Can I use that to jump on the dragon and or try to make an attack what, you so can... I can... Um, I think it's just an attack action. Right. It is. It says just you can immediately attack. Okay, then... It's basically an attack of opportunity. Hmm. Yeah, then I will like to throw... Uh, if I could... How clearly is, is Potch within my sights, or is the dragon, like, way too far in the way for me to... Where you are, I'm going to say that uh, Lord Grievering and you, who are fighting side by side, this dragon is reared up on its hind legs, exposing its armored chest and belly, although much of that is rotting away. But yeah, you can't see Potch from there. All right. Then I'd like to go yeah, to, like... Yeah, full cover for you. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, and I like to go up to the hind legs and take a slash with my sword, and let's see what I can do. All right, so that's a plus nine, and roll it. Oh, yeah, that's that's a miss. Thirteen. I'm gonna guess. Yep, yeah, that 13. is not going to hit it. Hmm. Right. So, so as you as you. Bring in, you said your sword, right? As you bring your blade in, it goes tang. I mean, you can't miss a dragon at point blank range like that. Mm. So it smashes him right in the chest during right on top of one of his still adhered armor plates. And mm. the impact goes tang, <laughs> jars both of your hands. They start to sting and buzz with the blow. Mm. What else for you, Lady Vi? Whew, well, I don't have a lot in the way of bonus actions. Um, mm. Mm. Do you know what, though? Uh, I am going to try and cast command on... Um, oh, what's his name on the, on the dragon? I didn't pay attention to his little speech. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was great, but I wasn't paying attention. Pudge, punch, punch, <laughs> punch. That was his name. Uh, punch. I'm going to cast command. Uh, so that would be a wisdom saving throw of seventeen, please. Oh, it's not normally a bonus action, but it is for me. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. All right. So wisdom saving throw. He gets a. 
plus six on this. Yeah, it's a long shot. Seventeen. Uh, he meets 17? it. He meets ah. it. Seventeen. Even Damn with it, the that would have been so cool. He is a high priest. That's all right, it was God. worth a shot. It that would was. have been very cool. It would have been epic. It would have been. Lady Byron, you will good. move stay safely out of range. I'm pretty safely out of range. I'm going to stick here. All right. I'm not, I might move so, a tiny bit closer, kind of underneath that tree. So I'm kind of between the two. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. That puts everybody all right, so, in all of my range. Fantastic. So the Draculich leans back even further. I'm getting the finger. <laughs> Somebody's giving is me it, the finger. Is it, is it the Draculich's turn? It is. Uh, it needs to make a charisma saving throw against fear from me before it kills us all. <laughs> Why does it need to do that? Oh, let me roll it in here. So I'm going to get a plus four on this roll. 12, 16. Fails by one. Uh, I, I it does this so because why do have to make that and what does it do? Um, I also have he's not the only one with cool fucking undead necrotic wings. As a fallen Asimar, I have these huge in my opinion, huge. I'm not here to compare sizes to the Draculich <laughs> No, but I have the Draculich goes. <laughs> I am... Um, I spread my uh, my wings out and sort of look up with void-like soulless eyes, um, and there's like an aura of just anger and hatred pouring out of me, and it is at disadvantage to attack. They can't move any closer to me. Disadvantage to attacks against you or against everyone. It, while while it can see the source of its fear. It has disadvantage on attacks, and I think that's it. That's just, it's just the standard wow. right. Nice. So as nice. your as your really big wings furl out from your back, <laughs> and this necrotic aspect twists your visage into a hellish form, Lord Grievering looks over at you in fear and confusion. It's it's a look that you've seen before of a man going, is he friend or foe? But then the dragon <sighs> wavers for just a moment, looks down at you, and Potch yanks at the reins that go through, um, like all around his, his snout, yanks at it. The dragon sort of snaps out of it and goes, <sighs> shrieking at the sky. Hmm. That is a frightful, presence. So each one of you need to make a DC 18 wisdom save or become they frightened. Don't. You don't? No, they don't. Right. I cast heroism at the start of the battle. Oh, I've still right, got it that's up. Right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Whew. Thank you. Uh, bye. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> Look down. Is obviously visibly thrown and a bit confused that that didn't have the effect that he wanted, he takes one black clad boot, digs it into the hips of this dragon, and the dragon lowers its head. Its torso swells, and all uh, of a sudden, uh, yes. It breathes out a cloud of dark blue swirling energy that blasts across Lord Greenring, across your Son of a, a bitch. Swirling oh. thing that reaches all the way to the safely out of range Lady Bai. Oh, damn. Sable watches this just barely off to the side, out of the cone of this massive swirl of necrotic energy. I feel really good. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be 12d10 necrotic damage. Ooh. Is there a saving throw here or nah? It's a saving throw. 
So here's the D10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I like that about Fantasy Grounds, that you can just gather all the dice. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be? Waiting for the total. 81 <laughs> points oh, oh of damage. But I'm... as the blast comes coursing towards you, all of you can yeah. make a DC 20 dex save. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah. To get out of the way. All right. Oh, what's my dex? Oh, that's, that's plus, plus zero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love weapons, especially dead ones. Not that we're enemies here. We're telling a story together. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, Son of a bitch. Oh, lady pie. <laughs> <laughs> what well, about Lord well I know what I'm doing next turn. I, uh, I have to make concentration saving throws, which I'll do in a second. Five. Um, which I assume was the point oh. of this. Oh, oh no, I don't. Because you. I'm oh. fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, looks like I'm dead too. <laughs> you are, you are down. I'm out. Not dead. All right. Yeah, well, not dead. I'm unconscious. Important, important yeah. difference that I don't want to gloss over. Yes. No. And <laughs> I'm the fire unconscious. Dissipates. The necrotic fire pulls apart into tendrils of dark flame, and as it dissipates, you seem to hear. <laughs> As if you got blasted by the screams of the suffering, Lord Grievering takes that 81 points of damage. Good grief. As a heavy, he still stands. But after that and the blows that he took from the Baylor, things don't look good for him. Sable, you can tell. You've seen on the battlefield time and time again the look of a man who has just a few swings of the sword left in him before he falls. You see Shiroi and Lady Vibrance. It's not like a blast of fire where they're cooked. They suddenly go ghostly white, tainted by the necrotic energy. They shrivel a little bit and fall over in a dead faint. They are down. That wouldn't be considered, that wouldn't be considered a spell, would it? No. It would not. It's a. Mm. It's the breath weapon. Didn't, unfortunately. Didn't think so. I might have no also. From me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Lord Grievering, though, as grieved as he is, no pun intended, raises his gleaming sword above his head one last time. You can tell the weight of it is almost too much. Tang! It smacks against the scales of the dragon, bounces off. He hits again, tang, obviously not enough strength left in him to direct his blade to the dragon's weaknesses. And now Potch looks down at Sable. A huge smile spreads <laughs> Josh is trying to give me the finger again. Zoot needs to make a DC 17. <laughs> I have an aura! It's just a thing. Every time you saw a turn within 10 feet of me, it's 17. And it, is it wisdom? It's charisma. Oh. All right. Slightly less charismatic than wise. Eight, Damn nine, ten, twelve. He makes a 12. Oh. So let me amend that description. He looks down at you. A little wave of panic washes across his face, but you can tell that this is a man who is not unaccustomed to frightening views. He pulls it in, and a smile spreads across his face. He points towards your fallen allies. Poor warrior. I won't let them die, though. Should they die, I'll bring them back, because their suffering can't be that swift. I will take them back to the bowels of Eus's palace, and there I will feed them to the tormentor for the rest of their lives. And you... This is fine. Yes. He begins to swirl his hands in the casting of a smell... A spell? Not a smell. In the casting of a smell, he goes, <laughs> huh? No, he's going to... <laughs> He's going to cast a spell. 
Do I want on that? There we go. So suddenly, he opens his mouth, and from it vomits locusts, biting flies, and strange abominations of insects, the likes of which are not normally seen in the Flanets. All of them jet black, swirling around, both you and grievering. You can each make a constitution save as you are being attacked, death by a thousand stings, a thousand nips and bites. So let's see what he does here. Grievering, can he do a constitution save? Oh, a 20. Oh, but that's only half damage. Yikes. So let me pull up. He's only got a couple of hit points left, so. Put this insect. It's going to be 4d10, 6d10. Poor Grieve Ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Toss. There we go. Drum roll 30. So Grieve Ring. He begins to scream, not a not a childlike scream, but the scream of a man fighting for his life as all of these bugs begin to infiltrate his plate armor, and now he's beating against his own breast, his helm, and he falls, clattering to the ground. What about you, Sable? What was your save? Did you do one yet? I did. A ten. Mm-hmm. Strong ten. A mighty ten, yes. The insects swarm around you. You feel your face begin to twist and distend as boils and stings and welts begin to rise upon it. And above the... You hear... (laughs) The cackle of Potch. Oh, Potch. Still tormenting you. But now... Three allies fallen, one beating against himself, trying to rid himself of the plague of insects. We have gone back six months in time. Now, let's go back two weeks, a mere two weeks from this moment, back in time. How? Did each one of you come together? When did you first come to see one another? (laughs) Josh, it will actually be, um, where are you? Yeah, it will actually be your turn when we return. (laughs) So you can get me up. Get me up. that bad boy cocked and loaded. Absolutely. So two weeks ago, Lady Vi and Sheroy are standing outside of a huge arched double doorway. You stand on a massive terrace. You know where you are. This is the great city of Ammonfort. It is set on an island just offshore in the midst of the near Div, the biggest lake in the Flaness. It's known as the Lake of Unknown Depths. And before you, before these closed doors, walks back and forth a man about six and a half feet tall. He is waif-like thin with a concave chest. He is in constant motion, fidgeting and twitching, his mouth working, but though you can't hear what he's saying. And each of you look to one another. You have known each other for about three minutes. You have just (laughs) been introduced to each other as you were brought together by Tubal, an emissary from the lands of Furiandi, sent by King Belvor to persuade Holmer, the lord of the shield lands, to accept his aid. Right now, Tubal said, quiet, don't speak to me. 
I need to think this through. We'll only have one opportunity to persuade him. Wait, wait. And he's begun muttering to himself. And so now, standing on that terrace, the two of you have a moment to speak to one another, if you wish. Hmm. Worst case, we can always do the old uh, threatening, I suppose. And I just sort of, like, show the claws to her and say, like, worse comes to worse. <laughs> My people will be avenged. You will get his help in one way or another. We will, but I don't think threats are the way to go here. And I'm looking around at all the armed people and guards, I'm assuming, are in the area. Yes, yes. You do know, I mean, this is the capital of your most bitter enemy. Yeah. The Shield Lands. I came here to survive, not to kill myself. All right. Well, what do you suppose we should do? Flatter him. Ingratiate ourselves to him. Mm. Bottle the rage for a little while. Show him that we can be of assistance in the most massive possible way, because anything less than that is going to get us kicked out on our asses. Mm. He sort of sheathes back his claws and his paws, and he's like, fine. But the second things go south, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. <sighs> mm. Well, do you have something to offer him? I'm not really sure, and I'm just sort of going through my things. All Let I me look at my character sheet real quick and see what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much in the way of valuable goods aside from this luck, this cherished no, I mean, my people. I mean for the war. Hmm. What can you give what? him to help him win, to help us win the war? It's not much, but perhaps I can reference with uh, Oliet. He said his forces are, four armies of elves are willing to fight with the humans in order to take down these orcs, so with his support and we, we can make contact with him, then surely he will be, his forces will be more than sufficient. I would lead with that. Hmm. Fair enough. And what so about as you? the two of you, oh, continue. She just looks at him and smiles. I have my own offering. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's meet the bastard and see how well this goes. So as the two of you were conversing outside the massive closed doors, inside, Sable and the the head of the, the leader of the Red Hands, Sir Rakor, are inside, seated at a massive round table. The throne of, of Lord Holmer stands empty. There is a barmaid who is clearing some empty flagons from the table, and there are four guards flanking the table. Sir Rakor has removed his breastplate from his torso wafts the, the ripe aroma of his unwashed self, and he scratches his protruding belly quite affectionately. And he turns to Sable and says, So is this your first time mating with Lord Homer? Sable turns, looks, him up and down, makes his judgments, turns his head away from him, and I don't believe we've had a chance to be acquainted before today, no. Well, I'll tell you what, you're not missing a thing. And he leans in towards you. He is pompous and arrogant, full of himself. He thinks himself to be the wisest and the strongest, and more importantly, he has virtue on his side, as if the paladins of the Red Hand are any less noble. This, uh, wise man, 
he happened to know a thing or two about personal boundaries because and i look down as he's like got close to me i'm not actually armed at the moment um other than an arming dagger um i'm in full armor but i don't have my sword with me and i just sort of give him a i wrinkle my nose slightly at the assailing smell um sir record looks at you looking at his belly and says oh please i've been wearing this plate all day it chafes as soon as as soon as homework comes in i'll close it back up again sometimes oh do you ever get an ingrown hair on your belly oh sometimes it goes to boil and you have to burst it <laughs> yeah I can... you putting the plate down might be an issue and I, I turn away from him. I'm done. I'm done, with this place. <laughs> done. Well, he doesn't seem to notice that you have slighted him at all. He says, well, Sable, I'll put in a good word for you. You're here for a reason. You have excelled in the Red Hand. And as I take orders for the Red Hand from Holma, I feel it's time for you to be recognized for your preeminence within our society of knights. Who knows? This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I look forward to that with bated breath. Thank goodness. <laughs> Outside the doors, Tubal, the unfortunately named Tubal, turns to Lady Vi. Better than one ball. And Shiroi. <laughs> yes, that's true. Three ball would be a little bizarre. But perhaps you could develop, you know, you could kind of make a thing out of it. Anyway, yeah. Tubal turns to the two of you and says, All right, this is what we will do. I have been offering him aid. And he has refused because he believes that King Belvoir does not merely want to help, but wants to annex the shield lands and make them part of his own territory. So here's what we do. Shiva, Shiva, Shiva what, what is your name again, Catman? Shiroi. Shiroi, Shiroi. You will help convince him of the severity of the threats. Let him know that the, the Vestvi forest is beginning to be tainted. He must know and understand that it's not just a threat on his doorstep, it's everyone's problem, so that everyone can work together to solve it. All right. Do you understand? All right, he teeds, he starts like sheathing in anger, like shaking slightly. Oh, I know the pain that lies at my doorstep far too well. Do you, I have lost my kind and Flameflower might be soon to fall. So I will gladly convince him of the severity of this situation. Yeah, a fantastic Catman. Just save that drama for his performance, please. And you, he wrinkles up his face in unsheathed distaste. Yeah. I bask in it. He Me. may charge forward and slay you on sight. I will attempt to prevent that. Oh, the well, gift thank that you. you. Brought, oh, it's all right. It's nothing personal. I'd slay you if I could. But these are strange times indeed, but are they can't. not? Precisely. <laughs> you cannot. I brought a gift, a valuable one. <sighs> yeah. So, you will explain just what a threat use is. You have seen mm. his first forces firsthand, I understand. Mm. And when you showed King Belvoir your gift, he felt it might persuade Homer to present yes. your gift. In public? Uh, oh, yes. There, there must be an element of performance to this. You, you understand. Oh, I understand, but this... If, 
the knowledge that we have this is dangerous on not on its own. I, I, I will do as our Lord commands, of course, but I think we will regret showing it to the masses as well. Oh, these damn paladins, I promised you on the other side of that door were as chaste as a chastity belt. No place is safer than this. Hmm. I feel like those may come back, those words may come back to haunt you, but as our Lord commands. Right. Fine, and fine. I sort of, all right. I was going to say, like, I'd sort of turn to Vi and just be like, and worst comes to worst, I'll protect you, Lady Vi. You can count on me. <sighs> the cat man that you've known Thank for five you. minutes. Yes. <laughs> I would venture that neither of you have seen anything like the other. Hmm. So this must Probably. be a little bit bizarre. Hmm. The yes. white cat and the red woman. Well, I, Lady Vi is like a like a pale, like a flesh-colored tiefling, but definitely horns. Oh. Two sets, yeah. double set of horns. Hmm. Fantastic. The doors slide open barely is there a crack wide enough for him to squeeze through when two ball has pushed through the door leaving the two of you behind the soldiers that open the door look at the two of you in confusion look at one another and then two ball is saying come come hurry i follow Following. suit mm -hmm. Tubo walks up to the table, grabs the serving girl by the wrist. Do not tell me that the service has ended. I need a, a, a large flagon of wine, and please keep them coming. Be quick. Tosses her hand away. Hmm. He eyes Sable and Sir Racor, who is still caressing his bare navel. And who might you be? Sable realizes he's being addressed, glances over. <laughs> I was, I, he hasn't introduced himself. I don't know who he is. I ain't giving him my fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come in and start hurling around accusations when you've just been let in the room? No, no, no. The, the grown ups are talking. Do not interrupt. <laughs> So I just say, say, completely ignores him. He walks around the table, giving the two of you a wide berth. You can see on his face a grimace of distaste as he passes behind your friend, Sir Racor. And he approaches the throne, sees it empty, and then turns quickly to the two of you. I am speaking to you. There is Lord Homer. I've been sent by the king. Sir Rakor kind of gives you Sable the... Yeah, I, like, I look at him. Yeah, I look at him and I say, my apologies. Perhaps your complete lack of social grace led me slightly astray there. You were addressing myself. Is that correct? Oh, I guess I was. Still night. Where is the game? I'm starting to realize. I'm starting to realize why we haven't been accepted. Like our why help hasn't been given before. <laughs> this is really how we've been approaching these things. <laughs> bloody wonder. Hmm. Uh, where where so, is the king? Yes, I I, <laughs> I don't know what he refers to. Is, and Shit, in, in the world of Greyhawk, that. there are many kings. Mm -hmm. He refers to King Belvor of neighboring Furiandi. You're here in the company of uh, Lord uh, Lord Holmer, the leader of the Shieldlands. It's almost as complicated as the cast of Game of Thrones. Okay, right. So oh, he's right. looking for Lord Homer. Yes. Where is Lord Homer? Yes, that's what I asked you. <laughs> no, I'm asking... Shane! 
You don't know. You're here waiting for him. <laughs> no, I don't know. I am. Um... Wait, where are you? <laughs> uh, if you pulled it back and there was just a man lounging on your sofa, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbing his belly. <laughs> I um, I turn and look at him. I say, I presume he is delayed and will be here shortly. And then I'd like to eyeball the other two who just walked in. So you make for a curious. Look. They do make for a curious couple. Mm. Mm. And as the two of you walk in, it's hard to tell. Which one is receiving more stares? All of the guards tighten their grip around their pole arms. One of them actually levels one of their pole arms in your direction. Give him a big smile. I show him my teeth a little bit. I, I look I look to the tiefling and I say, What the hell's you feeding that thing? Are you referring to Peasants, me? mostly. Oh, shit snacks, he can talk. <laughs> That's right, I can. You certainly are a smart one, I can tell. We feed him orcs. Feed him orcs. <laughs> Indeed. All right. I, I look to the guard who left the pole arm at them and I say, you look smaller than an orc. Probably go down real easy. Cast <laughs> nervous eyes towards his companions. And then Two Ball pipes up. Oh, no, your arms, fool. These are guests. Just stand there and look imposing, idiot. Hmm. You with you. Please be really that difficult for you just once. He laughs just a little bit. <laughs> and at that point, you hear a big door swing open and boom against the side. You hear the distinctive metal clank of somebody in full plate armor walking into the room at a brisk pace. Three persons actually enter the room. The first one is a knight with a red cape. And on his chest is emblazoned the sigil of the Knights of the Holy Shielding. Lady Vi and Sable know that insignia well. Yeah. <laughs> and there is also a woman with long, full, curly, golden hair. She wears a small metal helm upon her head. She also is dressed in full plate armor. And you can identify... Um, I would say that Lady Vi, for sure, can identify on the cape that is stringing out behind her, the insignia of Hieronius, a noble deity, pure goodness. And between the two of them, short, gruff, long-haired man storms in, sits in his throne, and he turns to Tubal. Well... I have been told that you have a new case to make for the aid of Furiandi. And may I say that this is the last time that I will entertain your presence in this hall. Make it good, Tubal. Hmm. Tubal seems to stagger back a little bit. Sable, beside you, you hear a clank of the breastplate being closed and latched and cinched and up rises your ally, Lord um, Sir Ricor. He stands and kind of walks up next to you. He leans in. No, oh, this is going to be good. And Tubal says, Lord, home, I bring to you the love and grace of his majesty. King, shut up. What do you have to say? Uh, the king has sent dread messengers 
to confirm that it is not merely his fear, but the fears of many that now spread across the planets. And he turns and extends a hand towards the two of you, Lady Vi and Shiroi. Hmm. Homer stares across the table and slowly stands, takes a couple of fairly intimidating steps forward. The knight on his side, which is Lord Grievering, by the way, pulls his long sword slowly with an exaggerated shing from his sheath. And the priestess of Hieronius beside him clutches her holy symbol at her neck. Hmm. Speak, visitors. I'm gonna let Shiroi go first. All right. So at this point, you're about 40 feet away on the opposite side of the large meeting table in the Great Hall. Hmm. I will walk up with you, but... Yeah, I'd like to try to get, like... Uh, I'd say, like, about halfway through around the table, just try to, like, get around their... Just, like, within their... Uh, yeah, not too close to, like, I'm trying to, like, cause an attack, but more just so, like, they can clearly see me and hear me, so... Yeah, just Kind of like there yeah, yeah, like, right where Lady Vi is, so... Tubal makes a deferential gesture, which is, of course, far too much, far too lavish, and vacates the center stage position to the two odd matches. Uh, phone call. Sorry about that. <laughs> to the two oh, right. odd characters that now take his place before Lord Holmer. Hmm. I sort of do a respectful bow and I say, my grace, I am Shiroi Gato, a tabaxi of Kashane and monk of Flameflower. I come bearing horrid news of the fate that lies at our doorstep. The armies of Igvil and Uz have caused great damage across this land. And I fear that your kingdom and my own people on next. Let me get a few things straight, may I? You Do are... What did you call yourself once again? A tabaxi. Hmm. I've heard of cat people, but I did not know they had a name to which they referred to themselves. <laughs> Let me learn. I am familiar with flame flower that is an elven enclave more than 200 miles from here first of all what does a cat person do in this elven enclave tabaxi i sort of get up from my bow and i just say that i've trained with the monks as long as i can remember i thought that my place with my people was not right i ran away when i was put mere kitten and found my uh, shelter with the monk people. <laughs> so you were a kitten, and then you went to go and train with the elven monks, much like a pet or a mascot, perhaps. And then I, I pipe a little bit like, Sir, I am no pet. No one is, I am a pet to no one. I am considered myself, and the, you can even talk to the masters. I am one of these monks and nothing less, nothing more. Fascinating. Well, this has been edifying, at the very least, but... Igwil has been gone for more than 40 years. What evidence do you have that she even is a threat once again? Any? Have you seen her? Well... I may not have seen her, but I have heard tales of a destruction that the orcs have caused. They destroyed my people of Kashain. The, the village has been wiped out and my family along with it, presumably. And I fear that my people and yours, the, or the monks of Flameflower, and your, p and your supposed... Um, your people might be next. Supposed people? Hmm. <laughs> 
Well, I suppose I should be ready for Igwil, the long-absent witch queen, to march the 200 miles between Flameflower and Amonford. Thank you for the advanced warning. You, tiefling, mm -hmm. why have you dared to come into my presence? Well, to backtrack a tiny bit, as far as I've heard, Igwill is not fond of marching and uses her powers to simply appear and lay waste. So I don't think the 200 miles is as much of an uh, obstacle as you think, uh, and I would be taking this powerful Tabaxi's words with... Uh, seriously, really. As for myself, I come on behalf of no lands and no villages because they don't exist anymore. Uh, I'm aware that our peoples have been fast enemies for many, many years, which uh, I our say people. with no small amount of, well, you know where well, I'm from, I presume. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet Hieronius, the joys yes. with which you bless me. You has taken the horn oh, society, and now my, now my enemies come to me as refugees. <laughs> refugees, refugees bearing gifts. But you don't have to consider me an enemy no anymore because I have no crown to which to pledge. I have no lord to serve. I have no army to join. And the best you I could may... do is charge me for war crimes, which we'll get to, maybe, if any of us survive, which we may not. Although I do have something that may assist in our survival, and I'm going to look over at our accompanying friend from the king to confirm that now is indeed the moment. And out of my cloak, I pull the orb and hold it up. So as you begin to pull something from your cloak, in one quick movement, Grievering and this High Priestess of Heronius are on you, standing That's right fine. between you and Holmer, as you describe what you whip out. Um, it's an orb. It's not. It's small enough to travel with, but it's not. It's not tiny. It's not inconsequential, and it's uh, a, a crystal orb that is, it, it appears empty until you look at it a little bit closer and then there is a swirl of black smoke that begins to rise in it as soon as it comes out of being covered up. Hmm. Whoever's going Lord, to take this, I would take it quickly. Lord Grievering has leveled a long sword at you. Just That's fine. A, the tip of it just before the orb that you hold in your hands. He says, step no closer, devil. Wasn't planning on it. My name is Vibrance. But you can call me Vi. So Lord Palmer says, so what is this that you have brought to me? Oh, you are unaware of the orbs of summoning that Ooze has been using to contact all of his forces. And I'm going to cover it with a piece of cloth and kind of wrap it up a little bit. Now that the dark smoke is starting to coalesce, I'm just going to cover it up a little. <laughs> <laughs> so Tuol strides forward with a flourish. Uh, Lord Holmer, please. Uh, she showed this gift to your majesty, King Belvor. And Belvor felt that immediately you must take advantage of it to see what a threat is at your doorstep. He doesn't look, Homer doesn't look at Tubal, continues to look at Lady Vi. Why do you what think I'm standing here alive? What does it do? How do I use it? <sighs> well, you keep it uncovered. If you would like to use it, I would recommend covering it the rest of the time. Uh, I would get this one here to use it, and I point to the uh, priestess, what I assume is the priestess, the cleric. Uh, I would get this one 
to use it, at least somebody who can protect themselves against being scried upon. But by looking through it and focusing on what you want to see, uh, if it has something to do with Ooze and his other armies, then you will see. It's a it's a pathway, it's a visual auditory pathway to the other it's orbs of which he has many. It's a trap. No. In fact, uncover it. <laughs> yeah, uncover and it. I look over to the priest. I do, and I look over to the priestess and I'm like, are you ready? She's clutching and I her cover holy it and symbol. hold it up. She seems quite stern. Homer says to you, now At least someone's it. taking this seriously. You, use it. Show me. Touch it. Caress it. Kiss it. Lick it. Whatever it takes. Use it. Activate it. See something and tell me about it. Oh, we'll all be able to see it. And I'll, I'll activate the orb. I'll put my hand on it and focus on... Oh, let's say I'm going to focus on the... Uh, any... the... Hmm. The army that I know is moving south from my own homeland. Hmm. I'm going to focus on that. So you, what do you do as you focus? Um, if there's anything physical that you do, paint the picture. It's just, I'm, I'm going to rub, wipe my hand over the top of the orb covering most of the surface and then bring it back around to the back so that I'm kind of cradling the orb in my hands. As you wipe your hand around this fell globe, tendrils of dark mist begin to wrap around your hand and, and, and wrap around the globe almost like gossamer spider threads. And you hold it in both hands, and these mists are enveloping your hands, swirling around it. The knight and the priestess keep a state of readiness, but move back from you. Shiroi, oh no, priestess, I need you here. She, her expression does not change. Hmm. Shiroi, is there anything that you do seeing this happen? I sort of just back away a couple of steps since I'm I'm still new to this lady vying her way, so I'm just sort of, uh, I'd say, moving closer. And Sable, especially since Shiroi has taken a step away, you have a clean view of this. This orb is less than, it's probably five feet away from you. Is there anything that you do? Um, I just sort of scratch the back of my he head, and as I do, um, my knuckles will just wrap gently um, one red gauntlet, uh, the only color really on his uh, the otherwise black plate mail, um, and just tap slightly against uh, a hilt which materializes across his back as I will summon my great sword. Just ready to... Oh, it's another tabaxi! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just... Uh, I'll get ready to... Um, to I'll, I'll get ready to kill Lady Vi. Okay. I, sort of, I mean, this oh, is the first time we've seen her. And this... Oh, okay. you, oh, what you I... certainly killed plenty of tieflings. Yeah, oh, mm. absolutely. What I have seen, what you uh, saying, Kevin? Stable Cross. Oh, what, what I, what I have Kevin. seen, Stable Cross. Oh, uh, no. Wait, what I have you, seen, you have Stable never Cross. Never seen him before. Okay, but do I see him like getting ready the sheath? Because if so, I'd like to step in between him and Vi and pulling up, showing my blade, <laughs> just saying like, "You want to go?" <laughs> just like yeah, just <laughs> protecting her. So Sable's right. Sable's face just lights up <laughs> as the cat steps in front and just <sighs> This is gonna be fun. And I just <laughs> grip I grip the hilt, but I will wait to see what happens. And, and the my... two of you are aware peripherally that everyone is that in that posture. Your, mm. your friend, Sir Rakor, has his blade completely drawn. The four guards with their pole arms all have them leveled at you. Everyone is in a state of readiness. And Lady Vi, you try to focus your thoughts on the army marching south. Mm -hmm. What is the face of the army marching south? Where would they be? Uh. 
Um, you're not well, quite how, sure. Yeah, how long since? Long how long then? since my... Because I know that that army is not going to stay put in, in the Hortonlands. I know that that was, no. that was a it's tactic been five and a half to... Months. Yeah, so they'd nearly they? be Where there. They would be near okay. the bridge. They would be near where we fought them. Hmm. Um, that's not an area that's familiar to you. You're trying to figure out how... So you, you trace your mind I would back know coming to up. Hmm. Yeah. And you try to think of how they would have come south from Molak. And for one second, your heart betrays you. Just a second. As you think about Molag, you think about a big obsidian-colored pot-bellied devil who you knew yeah. as death. <laughs> and at that moment, boom, the orb activates. You have just a moment to see everyone stagger back, and then you're gone. Great. Around awesome. you is something that can only be described as a hellscape. It is a blasted landscape of ash and obsidian that extends as far as your eyes can see. Flame Oops. hurtles from the sky like fiery rain, except exploding in massive Balls of flame, conflagrations blowing apart, shattering obsidian cliffs. And you become aware that you're on a high parapet on a black tower. And your father is about 15 feet away. He's kneeling with his back to you. And a black door opens before him comes out. You see movement around the corners of both of your eyes. You realize that there are devils everywhere. They all bow as one. And this devil, holding in his hand a shaft of obsidian and platinum with a tip of ruby, walks towards your father. You must give a report, and I must decide whether you advance or whether you suffer. Hmm. Classic hell tactics. <laughs> and you didn't realize just how present you were until un involuntarily <laughs> escapes your lips, a little sound involuntary, involuntarily spasms from your vocal cords, and everyone turns towards you. And of the orb. Your father. <laughs> You're back in the room. Everyone is standing at the ready, pointing blades at you. Nobody moves. Everyone so looks at one another. Homer says, so what's it going to do? Oh, Show me. I'm going to try again. It touched it. I didn't see anything. What does it do? All right, I sort of turn to Lady Vine and go like, maybe I can be of assistance and maybe the location... Oh, yes, where let I... your pet rub it, please. Probably not, okay. I, I don't would trust you. Uh, if you do not call me a pet, King. Fine, give it to the cat. Touch now. the orb. Right. <laughs> as soon as things start getting like aggressive, touch the orb. <laughs> I touch the orb with my paws. Ah! Uh, suddenly, a shroud of peace encompasses you. You are in the central courtyard of the Abbey of Amamorial which the humans know as flame flower. The massive tree in the center, leaves are falling. In this moment of stress, something within you immediately went to this place. Hmm. But the leaves that are falling are on fire. And you hear something cry out. <laughs> something is hitting the ground. Behind the tree, you see a flash of white. 
overwhelmed by shadows. You can't tell what's going on. Hmm. But something is crying out in pain. Something not human, not elven, crying out in a clearly sentient voice, but not a language that you speak. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still holding on to the orb and just could see if I can hear it more. Like, can I walk towards where it might be coming from? You have the urge to walk forward. You have just long enough to wonder, can I walk in this? And then suddenly you're moving forward. Whether you're walking or not, somehow your center of consciousness surges forward past the tree. And you see the unicorn on the ground. Its guts have been spilled. It still lives, lying on its side, its feet kicking ineffectually, almost listlessly, reflexively. Around it, over it, scamper many small demons. And then they all turn and look as one. You look too, instinctively, reflexively. And a beautiful woman in black drifts towards the unicorn. Long, straight, black hair. She wears a dark dress that accentuates every curve. And in every way, she is the image of perfection, of perfect beauty. Malice is in her eyes. She comes and lifts a bare foot that almost seems delicate smashes it down. The unicorn's horn snaps and breaks. The unicorn gives one last spasm. And still, the beautiful woman leans down, picks up the horn, and begins looking around. She turns towards you, a squint. I can see you, by the way. Wow. Who do we have here? Touch the orb. I'm like just scrawling. I'm like reaching for my sword. I'm just gonna rush her. I haven't drawn out yet. I'm just like making a rush towards you, this woman. You reach towards a shoe. You have the you know the physical impulse of reaching towards your sword. You don't have an arm. You don't have a sword. What? But you still, that, that desire to rush, and suddenly you are rushing towards you. She, smiling. <clears throat> you smack against her hand. You stagger back in Homer's throne room. Your other hand is off the orb. You're looking about. I'm sorry, I should have clarified. You think? <sighs> I'm growing tired uh, of this charade. Touch the orb! Right. Oh, I'm not touching it. Make one I of your lackeys really... touch it then. It's a single person experience. And do be aware that you touch the orb, you'll go somewhere. You'll be uh, incorporeal, but if you, they can hear you and see you, some of them, some people can hear you and see you. I don't know if it applies to all things. Hmm. Hell, you can have that pallet in there, touch it. And I point over to yeah. the table cross. Would you... Make a lackey like, do it. This <laughs> Grievering's hand tightens on his sword and says, My lord, I will do it if you command. However, if it has the taint of evil, I might... I might lose my connection to Hieronius. Yeah, look, it probably does. I'm I'm going to be honest with you here. It probably does. It seems it seems likely. Lord Homer takes two steps forward, looks around the room. Like... Would someone in my employ please come and touch this damn orb? Oh, come touch my ball. Sable takes a step forward and turns if it pleases your lord, I'll take your test. See what and this you are. 
devil woman wants. My name is Vibrance. You can call me Vi. I'll call you whatever I damn well want. I turn around and look at everyone else. Anyone in here have any reason to question my honor or my integrity? So I sort of scoff at him. <laughs> raises a hand, takes a small <laughs> step forward and says, Lord Holmer, he does a little bow. In the same way that I have served you as leader of the Red Hand, he, his name is, is Samuel Cross, he has served me and has risen through the ranks to be my right hand. I trust his judgment. Scraticus! Yeah, yeah. Scraticus. We love Scraticus. Hello. Hello. Hey, buddy. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, thank you, Scraticus. Scrat, I'm here to grab some some ball in my hand. Some lady ball in my hand. Some devil. Grab my ball. Yep. Grab devil that ball. one ball. <laughs> we've got so, two ball, now we've got one ball. I was going to say, oh, I'm going to make three ball if he keeps talking. <laughs> <laughs> So as Sir Rakor gives you a glowing recommendation, mm. Lord Homer looks to you, Sable. But do it. I uh, I look over at Vibrance and Vi, was it? Vi. Right. This fucks with me. I'm going to fuck with you in some real unpleasant ways. Sounds like fun. There's a little That's bit, just a little bit of a Nicolas Cage vibe to Sable sometimes. <laughs> I, put my, uh, my, <laughs> I put my hand on his shoulder and I just say, Oh, don't worry. I'll fuck you up before you even get the chance to touch her. So make way with it. Jeez. Touch the damn orb. They can see you. They can hear you possibly. Just don't do anything stupid. I reach out, I'm going to take the orb in my hand. And with the knowledge that you could use this to look wherever you want to look, where do you it's look? The whole, it's the whole reason I volunteered. I've left it just <laughs> long enough to make it look like I'm doing it begrudgingly. I take it. <laughs> no? And uh, I will, uh, f I will f conjure forth the name in my head. I don't know what I don't know what I'm looking for. I know a name. I'm not even sure I know it's spelled, but I have a fucking name. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Nice. Punch. You, as soon as you touch this thing, a tendril of mist spirals up your bicep all the way up to your shoulder you can feel a coldness in your heart as the world around you goes dark you hear some hurried feet quickly going down long spiral staircases you blink your eyes and you are in a vast chamber one of you're by one of the walls and it takes just a moment to realize that the very walls of this massive vaulted chamber are made of bones. Some of them massive bones as of, of titanic beasts. But you also see in the detail tiny bones as if the phalanges of children. Countless bones sewn together, plastered together by a viscous, somewhat undulating substance holding the whole mass together. And the room almost seems to breathe in some sort of toxic, necrotic respiration. And then to the right of you, spiral staircase, feet. I draw there several similarities right. between the uh the design and the decor of this place and the altar and thinking back to that and uh how it was designed i'm starting to get a feeling that i might be 
I might have another interested party um, involved in this. I will I will follow to the best of my ability. Yes, yes. So coming down, racing down the spiral staircase is a tall, thin man with limp, sort of stringy, greasy, dirty blonde hair. His face is sallow and sunken, but he is dressed in elaborate, rich robes. On the center of his chest is inscribed a giant red grinning skull, and he prances down the stairs past you and you turn to watch him go and that's when you look into the deeper part of the chamber it's vaulted there's a dais in the back of this chamber uh, a raised area perhaps eight feet raised from the ground tiers of stairs go up to this and on this dais is a beautiful woman with red hair wearing the same sort of robes as this man. She's lying languidly on the ground, on the, on the, uh, the upper part of this raised dais, and behind her is a throne unlike any you've ever seen before. It is a massive tiered pile of bones, and from this pile of bones emerge two boned hands, the palms making the backrest of a seat and fingers, bony fingers, curling over a small figure upon the throne, dressed in a black robe. It's an old man. It's just an, oh, it's a, a very ugly old man. For just a moment, he seems harmless, but then waves of malevolence and power radiate from him. You were about to say you were going to do something. Would I know of who this old man is in character? Um, let's do a history check. I'm going to give a fairly low DC. Boy's got a reputation. I have a... Uh, that's a oh. 19. Oh, wow. I'll take a second to come through. A little bit of a retcon here. The moment you see the red skull emblazoned on the thin man's chest, that's the signal, the insignia of Eus, the old. And then you begin to look around and think the Bone Palace. As you turn, you first see these arched clawed phalanges, the Bone Throne, and then the old man upon it. You can't believe that you are looking at Eus himself. It's essentially, to draw a parallel, it's as if you're looking inside Sauron's keep at the black eye himself. And the man rushes up to him and kneels. And the voice of the old man rings larger than he is. What news as we search south? How long until we take Amon Fort? Potch bows low, looks at the woman who gives him a very condescending smile, and he says, Lord of pain, I am prepared to leap upon the dragon and lead our forces myself. The woman goes, no, you stay here. I'm going. I'll lead the battle. Ah, there you are. Lordship, I, I wish I could support Althea's claim, but surely I should be the one to take the shield lands. Quiet. She look, he looks at the woman, Althea. I have another path for you. Potch. Maintain surprise. But yes, the time for the assault has 
scam. Who is here? He stands. I drop it. Yeah. I'm... Uh, also, yeah. all uh, of the room comes rushing back, and all of you hear ting, ting, ting. So I'm gonna catch it. I want to catch or, it. Oh, you want to catch it? I'm gonna be like, no, I, no, no, I, we don't I, break I, you. I, I would have, I would have been holding it out like visibly, like I'm gonna yeah. drop this. I'm gonna fucking drop this the second shit gets yeah. weird. And I would have been like, ah, <laughs> ready. I'm <laughs> nobody dropping my orb. All right, Vi, you are able to snatch my it bloody up. Orb. When you do, are you? What are you doing? No, nope, not activating it. Covering it. <sighs> covering you it with a piece of uh, red velvet. Covering it. No physical and contact, just covering it up and holding it like a like it's in like a makeshift sack. Mm. And <laughs> a more taller now, seeing that Sable has had some sort of experience, rushes forward. He actually pushes a little bit on Sheroy's side. Step aside, both of you. Do you resist him or defer? Oh, deferring. I'm gonna put a hand on Chiroy's shoulder and just be like, just gotta, just gotta put up with this. Be Just temporarily. Deferring. Just gotta put up with this for a little while. The two of you, Lord. a slight move forward, uh, to the side. He yeah. rushes up to Sable. Lord Griebring and High Priestess Tinette move forward to kind of be ready in case Chiroy or Lady Vi should do something to Lord Holmer. But he comes up to Sable. Sable, while you're still kind of rattled, eyes rolling around the room, he clutches at the fabric of your cape and shakes you a little bit. Well, what did you see? I saw inside the Bone Palace itself. Wait, silence. Tanette, we must know if this is true. Oh, Tanette, I can handle that. I can. She closes her eyes. So do you say that out loud? Yeah, I say that. I can oh. handle that. Oh, okay. So Tanette looks at you and says, we do not trust you. Is that not evident? Oh, it's pretty evident, oh. but I just just putting it out there, offering it says. Oh yes, and is it just butter? Because mumbles a little bit, and all of you hear. Pew. There's a shimmering radiance emanating from Tanette. It goes as far as Sable, encompassing most of you. Mm. Now oh, we'll know. About a fifteen foot cube. About a fifteen foot cube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> and Lord Homer says, speak the truth. It'd be a waste of your time and your short life to lie. Hmm. I'm gonna try and resist it. All right, huh? Okay. I, let me, let yeah. me actually pull this. Because they don't, they they don't, they don't actually know if I've, yeah, I know it's charisma, but I don't know. Yeah, that's what I want to look at real quick is, is do they know if you resist it? Hmm. Charisma ah. saving throw. And you know whether they succeed or fail, so. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay. he'll know if you succeed or fail. Yeah. Um, oh, in which case I'll, uh, yeah, I'll fail. Just accept. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I give I'll myself accept. willingly. Whatever it's happening. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Homer is on the edge of his seat, leaning into you. You can smell his breath. What did you see? <laughs> I believe what I saw was the inside of the Palace of Bones. I saw a man by the name of Patch. 
and a woman uh, by the name of Althea. She's a fiery redhead. Grieve Ring and Tanette are looking at one another, exchanging glances. These names appear to be known to them. Mm -hmm. These names are spoken out loud by their leader, sat on a bone throne, <sighs> used himself. Hmm. Tanette, he's telling the truth. Hmm. I think I'm telling the truth. I've seen illusions before, mighty powerful illusions, but I tell you now, I still see the taint of that man upon my skin as if I was there. And what's more, in the closing moments, I heard them mention a few things. I didn't get the name of the, it's Alf, uh, the name of the place that I'm they said. I'm in full, which is where we are. Where you are, yes. Yeah. yeah. They are launching a surprise attack on Ammonford. Apparently at the head of this attack will be Patch himself. And like, Sable pauses for a moment and sort of drums his fingers for a moment, just concentrating. Patch will lead the assault force uh, on the back of a dragon. I don't know how many they have or what else they have at their disposal, but there seems to be some kind of animosity between Althea and Patch, and finally, Hughes knows there was someone spying. Hmm. Are you quite certain? Did he see you? He called out that there was someone there. It could have been anything, but I didn't take no chances. Althea, he still speaks the truth. <sighs> Lord Grievering runs his hands through his hair. Walks back to his throne and sits with a heavy thump. Well, Tubal, perhaps I should have taken Belvoir's offer. Now I fear that it is perhaps too late. <laughs> yes, too late. <laughs> there in the center of the room, on top of the table, there is some sort of swirling black vortex beginning to spool and twist. And then it falls all over the table. The table immediately turns black rocks with necrotic energy and collapses and rising from the filth and decay in a spooling pile of worms is a single dark figure standing in the center of where the table once was he's about five feet tall his back is hunched almost like a bow pulled to the point of breaking he leans upon a twisted black root and his features are ancients. So, someone paid me a visit. Who, who came dangerous. to know me? I wish to share more of my glory. Please. Don't be shy. Can I use divine sense to tell if that is really any kind of, in any way, him, or if that is a vessel, or if this is an illusion? Because yeah. if he how is corporeal are we talking here? Yeah, how it corporeal appears to be in the withered ancient flesh. He doesn't appear to be translucent. He's not twisting or morphing in any way. Does There's he a light powerful, up his... malignant presence. Hmm. Divine okay. sense 
Let's, uh, what does that give you? D divine sense tells me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you sense. what it does. Divine sense, uh, let me tick one off. Uh, as an action, you can detect good and evil. Until the end of your next turn, you can sense anything unaffected by the hallow spell. You so know the location of... Or undead. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, tell me what that looks like for you to activate that sense. Um... Anything... Anything that... I see that is... I'd, I'd consider to be good would probably be um, anything I see that would be good I imagine probably has almost sort of like a chorus of quiet hard to make out female vocals singing behind with a slight golden aura um, uh -huh. uh, and seems to almost glow uh, which is saying very that speaks to him of good. It, it conjures up one of his his happiest memories, um, and the other one, if it's evil, it would. Or if it's dark, I imagine it used to be something different, and now it's almost sensing uh, his new companion, uh, of whom he does not speak. Um, almost maybe like a kinship or an understanding, a recognition, a appreciation for power something um and that sense that uh whatever this is is something not to be trifled with and potentially to be parted with that's not me <laughs> saying that that's not me saying that <laughs> so as you as you cast out this awareness that is that's just power, part of your your holy power lord grievering and tinnet the high priestess explode into a vivid radiance. It is clear that if there is anything good in this world, they are closely aligned with it. Lord Homer, sitting back now in fear on his seat, doesn't radiate much in the way of palpable, discernible good. Tinette, and I mean, um, Tubal, out of all of the persons in the room, has the darkest aura. Not of undead or fiendishness, but just of a sour, wicked heart. I thought you were going to say he was like more evil than Ooze. I was like, I'm oh. Be right back. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. Be right back, folks, guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me just take care of this people here. Lady Vi has somewhat of a Nothing. shifting, buzzy aura. Yeah. You can tell that she is has some sort of a fiend lineage. You can sense that and see it. Yeah, and but I mean, like, the eyes. Yeah, like, if that wasn't the dead giveaway... <laughs> you knew! I had you at the <laughs> horn. But as you turn your visage towards this small black cancer in the midst of the, the rotted table, your senses are absolutely overwhelmed, overwhelmed by a crushing black wave of evil. To the point that your sense is agonizing to continue to perceive. And you have to let it drop. You don't know whether he's real or not necessarily, but there is evil coming from him. And hmm. he asked the question, who came to you, to him? Hmm. I go to say something snappy, and instead I tell him the truth, because I'm under zone of truth at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so saying really smart and sassy, and, uh, and you like, guys ah. can just fill in the blanks, uh, but he goes to say something, and his mouth almost sort of wrestled into the sh unfamiliar shapes, um, chews out the word uh, almost a little sideways. I did. And Christ. Christ. almost was a little surprised. He is suddenly beside you. He is now looming over you, this once five foot tall man. 
now is reaching crone-like fingers towards your throat. Then let me embrace you in the full knowledge of who I am. Reaches his fingers around your throat. (sighs) Takes his hands off. I see. Fascinating. (laughs) I'm sure our story will continue. But you... Go ahead. You would like I, what? I'd like, I'd like to stab him. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I I mean, my, and I'm like having my sword, sword put out at him. Like reasonable. I'm just ready to go. <laughs> like I, I, I kind of feel bad about cutting him off. <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, it's ooze. He's in our fucking home. <laughs> yeah. Right. I feel like this is in my wheelhouse. This is kind of a thing. I feel like. Especially considering he kind of just gave me a freebie. If I don't try and stab him right now, I'm going to have to answer so many fucking questions. Oh, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. So tell me, what do you do? Yeah. Uh, I will bonus action vow of enmity. Don't, I won't do all the other crazy shit because right now that would really not go. If I turn all necrotic and shit, I'll probably be lynched. It's probably bad. Head. Yeah, uh, so I give myself <laughs> advantage against him, and I will swing, and I will go full out loony bin for him. Uh, <laughs> I... Drum roll! What is a demigod's AC? Well... Uh, is it a nat 20? Is it nat 20? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> And that's that your demi- second blow, right? So you're no, thinking, no, that's I, no. It's at advantage because of vow of enmity. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, would have been better. So as you bring your blade down on this old man, you feel a certainty of power. You feel all of your dark energy swelling, and uh, he's gone. He has used his reaction for shadow step. And your Ah. blade hisses through the empty air and tangs on the ground where he stood. When your blade hits it, the the floor crumbles a little bit as if the force of your blow and the toxic poison energy of his evil has made the, the floor brittle. He has shadow stepped directly next to Lord Homer. Grievering and Tinet spin around, and he has long enough to say, Well, our plans have accelerated. Farewell. Kill them all. And then he and Lord Grievering are suddenly gone. In the back oh. of the room, there's a morphing, a shifting, almost as if something is beginning to tear. Hmm. And in the darkness, all three of you hear <sighs> huge shrieks of power. Tick tang tang ching tong. Blades, dozens of blades smashing against one another, and some sort of a dog like howl. <laughs> three creatures, massive demons, step from the void in the back of the room. Oh boy. <laughs> but that was two weeks ago. Sable has been denied a strike against the Lord of Pain himself. But now, standing alongside an undead dragon with Potch, the name that has tormented him for six months, only feet away, within his range, it is his turn to act. I... What do we do? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, I really should be helping helping friends, but uh, I'm not, You're not really here. You? I'm not really here for you guys. I'm here for, the, I'm here for him. 
I don't know Just you guys. I don't know you guys. Um, I go for the um, for the dragon. I will go oh, for the a... dragon. Remember, mm-hmm. two, uh, th- well, two, uh, three people are down. Yeah. Two of which are PCs, and yeah. one NP. Yep. Yeah. But if I what? get. And one PC Why, might have, uh, you know, mass healing word or something. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> important. Here's the thing, I can't get to you. Yeah. I, I, I can't actually cover the distance to you. You're out of my distance. Yeah. I'd have oh, to, yeah. if I disengage, I've got Lay on Hands prepared, and I have Cure Wounds, and I have uh, an Asimar healing ability, but all of them take an action. I could get the Monk yeah. up, but I can't get him up much. And the dragon will probably take him out next round, or I can try and ter- I can try and drive this dragon back for long enough to get the monk up. The monk has healing potions. The monk can get to you, and then you can you you two yeah. can and sail off into the distance. Everybody the up! Yeah, and then you oh. can what? You can sail off into the distance as I go. Well, I drew aggro. <laughs> Let's do it, oh, please. <laughs> Help me. Help me. Oh. Asimar Paladin chooses to tank. I am going tank. to get 20 again. Oh. Yes. yes. Nice. Amazing. Fuck him up. Holy uh. cow. Good grief. That's intense. <laughs> so I... what do you have left that you can spill? This is this is everything. This is, this will be this will be the full Monty. But once I've done it, guys, I am in. I, I I have like I can still hit like a paladin. I can still get loads of attacks in, do cool stuff like that. But, but this, this is, is it. my this is my this is my this... cummy hummy ha one off fucking do or die. <laughs> yeah. be, the be final blow. Well, quite literally, do this... or die. Essentially, the same blow you gave the Baylor. I'm assuming. Uh, but better. It might be significantly more this time. Oh yes, it's a nice it's crit. Oh. It's a crit. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh my god! Oh, they need to see these man, I'm I, terrified. I look god. up at the. I look up at um the rider, because I can't really get to him. Like he's on the back of a huge dragon. But I look. I look up to the rider, just dead eye him. And I say, do you know who I am? <laughs> Does oh, he respond to you? I'm going to give him a second to respond. Yes. No one. <laughs> oh, boy. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I pull back my, I pull back my sword and just channel every single bit of hatred I have left from Tasha, from my divine wrath, from everything I've got, and I close my eyes for a split second, with these necrotic tears pouring down my face, and I whisper, "I'm coming, Rose." And I'm gonna swing, <laughs> and that'll be. Oh, he fills the whole tray with dice. A hundred oh, fifty damage. Nice. Get <laughs> eat a whole <laughs> bag. Of... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Woo! Oh. Nice. I don't think I've so ever seen. <laughs> I have never seen somebody roll 150 damage. Um, <laughs> question in chat: hard. These are level 10 characters, but Sable in particularly, in particular, yeah. is ruthlessly min-maxed for this one <laughs> attack. <laughs> this is, this is off on a nat 20. <laughs> I can only do it on a nat 20. If I miss, I basically oh my waste God. my whole turn. But if I can nat 20 and stack everything I have on him, 
Damn. Oh my that's gosh. Like... Minus 150. All right. If he if tell he me moves, that kills. If, he, if he moves, he takes another 8d8 thunder damage. <laughs> um, but people <laughs> is trembling. So you plunge your sword, but how do you hit? Do you tell me? You got the crit. How do you hit? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. The the, the Draculich is currently afraid of me. Um, is it got like reins? Yeah, he does, it doesn't go through his mouth, obviously, because he's got a breath weapon. But there yeah. is like reins that that uh, go around his snout, almost like a dog snout, and it goes. Yeah. there's a whole rig that keeps Potch on his back. I I grab I grab the rein with one hand, sword balanced, and I'm just gonna one handed and put all my weight behind it whilst grabbing hold with the other hand of the rein, so I get a good clean swipe at the neck. Um, and uh, I look up and just as I bring it overhead, I say, "You're gonna remember my name," and I bring it down <laughs> the back of his neck. <laughs> right on the back of his neck. All right, I've got a lens. So your blade cleaves deeply. It goes down about four inches in the back of his neck, hits the spine, can't quite cleave the spine, but the force of the blow is so great that it levels the blade and it slices the neck in half from the spine down. So a huge gaping wound, black eye core goes, <laughs> You are suddenly slimed with viscous black. It smells like rot. Perhaps this is like rotten dragon blood. Whatever it is, crosses all over your body. <clears throat> the dragon buckles and waves. Potch rises and falls. And I'm going to say, just for story's sake, with the nat 20 and that kind of hit, half of his rig is torn loose. The dragon rears, its head sliding to one side. Potch. His whole rig slowly tips and the boom, 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 topples off the back. He's harnessed in to stay on this dragon and the harness and the seat have all fallen back and he lands on his back with all of these cords and cables and straps all over him. The dragon is still alive, but clearly grievously wounded, flopping its wings, unable to take flight its head not able to even be pulled into alignment. And Potch, as he slips backwards, it's a very satisfying, ah! And he lands on his ass. Wow, there we go. Lady Vi, on the other hand, let's have a death save. I need save. to make a death save everything through, yes. Yes, oh, yes. Well, good, well, good, well, good. Roll. I haven't done one of these in ages. What's is there any modifier on it? No, nope, it's nope. straight D20. Just no, a straight D20. Yeah. Just 50, 50. Ten. There Ten. you go. Yeah. Ten. All right. And so that lady by the dragon. Hmm. I'm not gonna roll just based on the story I just told, I'm not gonna roll to see if his breath weapon recharges. I think when you run a nat 20 and get that kind of hit. That that's just not going to happen. So <laughs> what will the dragon do? He, I'm going to say, looks at, obviously, he, he tries to get his head around to look at, at, um, at Sable. I'm going to say because of the wound, he can't turn it quite that far. So he scratches that direction uh, with a claw. Does he hit? What do I need? Keep rolling that incorrectly. All right, rolling here in fantasy grounds. We go, oh, obviously blind. You're able to dodge that claw. You hear a whistling in the air. You look over your shoulder, Sable, and the tail is whipping towards you now. Whoop. Um, and assuming 13, 14, 16 is not going to hit you. Nope. Nope. So. Obviously, you're on the wounded side of this dragon. It's just blindly flopping its attacks in your direction. But it does take a moment to dive downwards with its head snapping at Shiroi's lifeless body. 16. 
Was, oh, I get advantage because you are down. And that would be, yeah, a 16. Does a 16 hit you, Shiroi? Uh, no, it does not. I mean, I, yeah, even without the two plus from uh, the Lord I got earlier, no, does not hit. Even with advantage, he didn't get you. So I'm just going to say, he's so thrown, the black blood continues to course from his massive neck. He fails to get Potch. Poor, poor Potch. So now, Shiroi. All right. You would fail the death save automatically if he'd hit you, but you have to make one now regardless. All right. Let's Drum roll. roll. All right. That is a 13. That is a success, I believe. That is a success. All right. All right. That's all I can do. So, Potch, now. Lying in all of this stuff, I'm going to say this. It's going to take half his movement to stand up, and I'm going to call him um, restrained at this point because he's all tied up in all of this mess. He is going to what will he do? What will he do? There's so many buttons that I could push. He looks so I might just make an enemy of Josh for life. <laughs> it's all part of the story, my friend. He looks at you, now clearly in a panic. The bravado of no one is gone. He now understands that he is in a fight for his life. And he casts... And you feel the world around you begin to shiver, shimmer, grow transparent. You use all of your will to resist. What save is that for banishment? Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Please tell me it's good. Because <laughs> we need like... All right, let me look at his spell save. His spell save is 19. Charisma, is that it? 90% sure it's sure. charisma. Uh, 90% I can sure. check that. I'm coming, I'm uh, pulling it up. It is a charisma. Yes. Yeah. DC 19 charisma. charisma. Let's see if you can get another 20. <laughs> Come on. That is a 16. Plus oh. nine. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice. Plus I'm, nine. Yeah, I'm uh, a paladin. Uh, I get I proficiency to charisma saves. It's my thing, charisma. Oh, Oh that is my amazing. goodness. Oh. So he cast this spell. You see a smile spread across his face as you slowly become translucent, losing your connection to the plane. But something within you, maybe your rage, you push back against the spell. And his face suddenly turns to total panic. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Second. Sable, it is your turn. You okay. have two allies down, three allies down. The dragon <laughs> still lives. Don't know, don't know uh, about my uh, my boy here um, who went down writhing, covered in whatever that was that was eating him alive. However, cat person just looks horrifically singed or moldy yeah. i don't know i don't know. cat person um yeah i will use my <laughs> it looks like something the cat dragged in <laughs> indeed indeed he does i will use my once per long rest um healing hands uh, right. which gives him 10 hit points instantly mm -hmm. i'll put that in there Killing oh. hands. Is that it's a my, bonus I, action? I, 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 no, it's an action. It's my Asimar ability. It's oh, a racial gotcha. ability. One, once per day, you can give your level in um, hit points uh, in healing. All right. Um, so I will reach down, grab uh, the cat person, 
and uh, sort of like <laughs> start dragging them to their feet, but I don't I pay them him next to no attention. And then oh. I'd like to walk over to my boy, my buddy, my pal. <laughs> Who I'll get all up and powers against you, still tugging at the straps that have him restrained. Ooh, he's restrained. Um, now, I unfortunately. Do, 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 do. Only thing I can do. Is da, da. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, so while he's looking at this, Shiroi. I don't know what you're dreaming of. Kittens? All right. Maybe you found your happy place far from the necrotic energy that have shriveled your body. But then suddenly, a gasp comes back into your lungs, still reeks of the necrotic energy of this undead dragon. You sit bolt upright and then get pulled up to your feet before your eyes are even focusing on the battlefield. Sable has somehow brought you back and you're trying to regain your equilibrium, you look up and see that the dragon has been gravely wounded. And the knight, Lord Grievering, lies at your feet, taking a quick stock of the battlefield. Lady Vibrant's tiefling has fallen. Hmm. That's what you see. But it's still your turn, say. Mm -hmm. um, and I will cast, because I don't have a lot of stuff left, it's a first level, I'll cast Compelled Duel. On packs. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Good yeah. shit. Fucking fight wow. me, bro. <laughs> I'm literally gonna get in his face and just say. Compelled Sorry. duel. I don't have that in my my thing so, here. You attempt to compel a creature into a duel. It's a bonus action. Uh, you can cast it uh, in thirty feet. Um, oh, that's so perfect. Uh, it is a uh, concentration, which means my hex drops, but it was on the Dracolich anyway. Um, and I'm going to focus on him. And um, da -da -da -da. Uh, you attempt to compel a creature into a duel. One creature that you see within range must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is drawn to you, compelled by your divine demand. For this duration, it has disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures other than you and must make a wisdom saving throw each time it attempts to move to a space that is more than 30 feet away from you. If it succeeds oh. on its saving throw, the spell doesn't oh restrict boy. the target's movement. I can't attack anything other than him, and he can't attack anything other than me. Oh, so if he fails the save, all it doesn't do is restrict the movement. Um, no, no. If he, if he fails the initial save... He then has to make a save to move more than 30 feet away from me gotcha, every gotcha. time he tries. So, for example, if this bastard was trying to teleport away, for example. Fly away <laughs> or teleport. Very smart, man. Ugh. Oh. So you see his eyes widen as he senses the power you're trying to exert over him. His face grimaces in effort as he tries to resist. Dang it, I keep clicking the wrong button here. Let's roll an eight plus wisdom 14 he has rolled a 14. He, is that plus anything that's with the plus okay why did i rolled an eight i don't know why it didn't come up but yeah i rolled an eight here in the okay. in the fantasy grounds chit chat uh, now it's doing it do was. well that was not what i rolled i rolled an eight Okay. Okay. Oh well. So I'm going to go with the eight plus his bonus is fourteen. So he is compelled. He feels your influence permeate his body, and he levels his eyes at you. Fear all over his face, but he sets his breath, takes a deep one in, blows it out through his nose, and extends his hands towards you. They shake a bit, mm. but mm. for better or worse. He is resolved to take this with you to the end. Mm. Thus ends episode two. Oh, no! Uh, uh, the still Herald of the Eric, why? <laughs> but you're gonna fix that. You're gonna fix that next time. <laughs> I, I will, but. You're shit. gonna fix it. I'm gonna mass healing words. Oh. Uh, 
my goodness. Uh, I love great. kind of like the, the dungeon master Nat 20 is when the episode ends and people clutch their faces. That's like, yes, roll the Nat 20. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hate to quit now too. Mm, but yeah. Hey, Roleplay has another show coming. Dang it. Dang it. We gotta go. Oh, let's go around and and everyone remind the world where they can find your awesome selves over the course of the week. You are a busy bunch. Start with you, Alex. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. You can find me on Twitter at Alex Catu. Uh, that's pretty much it at the moment. You can find me sometimes on variant roles as well, but not so much at the moment. Uh, I play Lady Vi Lady Vibrance, and that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good, good. What about you, Kevin? All right, you can find me on Twitter at kkudova, on Instagram kkudova1, on YouTube at kevinkudova, and if you liked my performance here, you can also catch me in the game First Degree by Parival Games, where I play Dave Corelli for more vocal performances. And yeah, be sure to catch me on here for what Troy's going to do next week. <laughs> mm, the vocal performances, yes, yeah. Yes. And I didn't quite get to the part where I assigned the magic item. There is still a magic item that has been purchased by a member of the community that must be assigned. It's coming up. I haven't forgotten. I'm DM Shane. If you like me, then you can follow me on the Twitters at Mage and Sage. If you like the world of Greyhawk, uh, you can find me DMing a bunch of games all in the world of Greyhawk over on the Twitches on Greyhawk channel, the Greyhawk channel. And until next week, oh, please think Greyhawkian thoughts. What I say when I sign off, when I'm on the Greyhawk channel, and it's appropriate now, good night, everyone, and stay gray. Bye-bye. <laughs> Adios.